Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored from New York. I and Mike Tyson have done an extraordinary life of triumph and tragedy on both the front and back pages. He was the king of the ring, 44 knockouts, an undisputed world heavyweight champion. And for me, the greatest boxer of them all. He's always unmissable television. But the last time I interviewed him, it looked like he'd just been knocked out himself. I'm, I just want to do this. I plan on doing this for um, a, a charity exponent, and I think I'm capable of doing that, and that's what I want to do. But there have been concerns raised about the fact that you are two men in your 50s uh, fighting each other without protective headgear. What, what do you think about those concerns? I think it's very wonderful that we're fighting together, that the fight that we should have had. Well, I can see you laughing there, uh, Mike Tyson. A, thank you for joining me again. You look a lot perkier today than you did then, Mike. What was going on last time? Hey, listen, I, was, I, I had hurt myself at that particular time. I guess I was training. Something happened. I hurt myself. And I, my, I received some painkillers from my wife. And after I received these painkillers, I was just incapable of articulating anything. It was just a mess. People thought I was so boring as an interviewer that I'd literally driven you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it was my fault, everybody. It was my fault. I need you to take the rap for this one, Mike, because uh, I got killed for that. It was like, Morgan, you're just sending people to sleep. What's the matter with you? Uh, it's, it's great to see you again, Mike. First of all, how are you? We, I've been watching you fighting. It was fantastic. And the next thing I saw, you were in a wheelchair because I think you've had bad sciatica blow up and stuff. How's your health generally? Yeah. Man, it's splendid right now. I've been training every day. I've been working out. I've been slightly watching what I'm eating, and I feel wonderful. Well, that's great to hear. Um, I want to talk to you about a number of things. But first of all, I want to talk to you about uh, Ukraine. Uh, the reason being that I went out there recently, and I met with both the Klitschko brothers, two great uh, world heavyweight champions themselves. One is the mayor of Kyiv, the capital city of Ukraine, fighting to, to save that city. His, his brother has actually been on the front line occasionally as well. What do you feel about that, that these guys that, you know, have been such great champions in the ring are now literally fighting for their freedom? Yes, I, I, I'm, I have a great deal of respect from those two fighters, and they're champions in the fight for their country as well. What do you feel about this war, Mike? What do you, what do you think should happen? I think um, it, should, it shouldn't be a war anymore. Do you think that what Putin did was wrong? I don't know what Putin did, but I, I don't think they should be fighting. What about domestic politics here in America, Mike? There's a lot of turbulence, a lot of people very angry at the moment, possibly made worse by the pandemic and being locked away and not being able to see loved ones and so on, but a lot of anger in society. What do you make of that? I believe during all um, political competition, it's always ugly. But do, you, do you feel it's getting worse? Do you feel like tribalism between people is getting worse, that the ability to listen to other opinions and not get furious is, is getting worse? I just think everybody and if um, she just work together and build a conglomerate. How do we do that, do you think? Hey, by trusting and loving one another. Look how far we came since the 80s. And we're going to continue to go further and further. I'm really, I'm really positive in, about this country. Well, that's, I mean, that's good to about hear. Where it's going in the future. Right, a lot of people are negative about America. Why are you positive? Um, it's the country of my home. I believe in it, and I believe it's going to really um, flourish after this pandemic is truly over. How did you find the pandemic, Mike, being locked, locked down and not able to see loved ones and so on? Well, I don't like... If I could say and be permitted, I really um, flourished during the pandemic. I really, um, 
I, I, that's when I became a great um, advocate for charity. Because I was just very grateful for what happened during the pandemic. Why, why were you grateful? Um, because I was able to help people that couldn't be helped. Right. In what way were you doing that? I'm just charity, food, on the line, coats, jackets, um, book bags, back to school programs. It's quite a shift for you, isn't it, to go from the baddest man on the planet, that was your fighting title, that's what your great uh, coach, Customata, wanted you to feel so that you were invincible in the ring. You go from that guy to a guy who, in a very difficult time for the world, uh, was so keen to help everybody else, to, to be charitable towards them. Well, I had, I had a great trainer to teach me how to be a great fighter. And now I have a great teacher to teach me how to be a great um, humanitarian. When you think about your journey, Mike, your life, how you've, how you've evolved as a human being, what place have you reached now? Are you happy in yourself? Hey, um, I'm very happy and I'm very proud of myself. I, I never understood my accomplishments as a human being until last year, perhaps. I never took myself serious and Last year I tried and it turned out really well. What did you learn about yourself? What have you, what have you worked out about yourself? That I was a scared little boy for a long time. And you're not scared anymore? No, because that scary little boy is really vicious and mean and scared. How have you found peace, would you say? My family. That's my greatest accomplishment. Being a father, being a husband? Yeah, um, just the whole, the whole thing, man. How do you spend your days now, Mike? My days? Yeah. Um, I, do it, I, do it, I do anything I want. What's an average day for Mike Tyson these days? Um, first thing, get up, worked out for two or three hours, come back, take a shower, eat my breakfast. Most of it is, um, I don't know, plant-based. And then um, I may, may go to work with my wife and may do some interviews. Listen, I had some great interviews yesterday. I had Little Nas X. Tiger and Leslie Jones. Well, I did a oh, great. Oh, I kicked the ass yesterday. I did a I did a great interview with you in your hot box for your podcast. It was fascinating. Yes, you did a great one, great one, <laughs> and you're always welcome as too. I would love to do it again. It was, we had a, an amazing, fascinating chat. And I always say to people that you're a very you're a complex human being, but you've got a massive heart, an extraordinary work ethic. And I don't think I've seen many people who've evolved as a human being more than you have, given the tough upbringing you had to where you've come to today. Hey, I just think of it from this perspective. Mm. The, great, the, gr the greatest talent that God gives you, he gives you a lot of flaws to go with it as well. Mm. Do you think all great human beings are flawed? In order to succeed, they have to be flawed. They have to experience some kind of shame in their life that won't allow them to be in the position they believe was overwhelming to them psychologically and emotionally and physically. Who are the people in history, Mike, that you most respect for whatever reason? Alexander the Great. Um, Elijah Muhammad, um, Jesus, Prophet Muhammad, Moses. I have an array of great people that I like. Flavius um, Belisarius. It's just so many people that I just, I don't know, Charlemagne, Pippin, 
Charles Martel. You know, I can go array, array of people who I admire. Genghis Khan, Kubla King. You just so many great people that I love. El Cid. I look. I read about them every day. What is the what is the trait in a human being you most admire? Is it an ability to bounce back from adversity? Well, that's good too. That's really flamboyant, and people think it's great. But a human being, his greatest ability is, is the ability to love. Mike, I'm going to take a short break. Come back. I want to talk to you about this extraordinary incident on a plane where, for some reason, oh, yeah. uh, a very annoying passenger decided to, to, well, annoy you, and he got his comeuppance. We'll talk about that in a moment. Welcome back to Piers Morgan, our censor from New York, um, with Mike Tyson, formerly the baddest man on the planet, but now a very different man, as we've just established. Mike, you're on a plane, minding your own business, when another passenger for reasons that continue to baffle me, decided to goad you. Let's remind viewers what happened. This is George talking to Mike Tyson, bro. <laughs> crazy, bro, Mike Tyson. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey, Mike, Mike, come on. Let's go. Turn that way. Yeah, you got up. Now, I guess they're watching it right now. Now, Mike, that incident ended exactly how I expected it to once that idiot started mocking you in that way. Uh, what were you thinking as you sat there when this guy was doing what he was doing? First of all, I came from this place where I... Um, it was called Hippie Hill, where at least 60,000 people were there and we're all smoking cannabis, OK? So by the time I'm on the plane, I'm high, hungry and tired. OK? Mm. And this guy keeps um, antagonizing me, right? And then it, I came to my senses and kicked <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, I'm only joking. I'm only joking. I wish I had listened. We are on censor, Mike, but, you know, you've got to be careful. <laughs> I know, I didn't kick him that. But my, 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 my bodyguard jumped on top of him, and I was hitting my bodyguard. Which I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what I imagine you've achieved, Mike, is that nobody will annoy you on a plane again. No, listen, that guy was just being um, irritant, really. What are you talking about? And yes, he hit me with a water bottle that my wife reminded me of. Right. Yeah, I mean, completely pathetic behavior. He shouldn't have been doing it. Do you, do you get a lot of this kind of stuff when you go around? All right, out of 10 people, I may get one. How many do you deal with? Quite a few, but <laughs> I may only have to put my hands on one. <laughs> I can't Look even it. imagine. Right, listen, I can't. I, I, I can't play like that because my wife gets mad. My wife gets so <laughs> mad when I'm playing. She doesn't well, like my sense of humor. Well, your wife She's is... She's always thinking I'm going to get canceled or something. <laughs> Your wife is a, a delightful lady. I've had the great pleasure of meeting her. Um, do, you think she she is keep, delightful. do you think she keeps you out of trouble now, Mike? Well, I think she thinks she keeps me out of trouble. <laughs> I'm just always with her, so that's why I'm not in trouble. <laughs> but if she wasn't with you, more people would get a smack. No, I don't agree on that. I guess I would... My wife always tells me to be nice when I go outside, so... I would take that advice and be nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's the secret to true love, Mike? Excuse me? What's the secret of true love? Bad memory. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a romantic man now? Big time, yeah. Because, you're, you know, your wife, I, I've seen you together. She, you're very much in love with each other. How do you, how do you show your yes. love for her? Me, I buy her a house. <laughs> <laughs> that would make me love you. <laughs> uh, I'm, hey, listen, man, I'm busting chops. I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I help her as a parent, and we co-parent our kids simultaneously every day.
And what, what kind of values, Mike, do you try and teach your kids? Excuse me? What kind of values do you teach your children? You have to be spirited and have gump and never give up. And, and you still deal with life is just a long line of puzzles that need to be solved. And then without that um, competition spirit, people are not going to do well. And they have to know about competition. Because without competition and training them, they give in under the slightest struggle. Right. So I've been talking about this a lot because I think we are creating a soft environment for kids, which doesn't help them. You know, at school now, if they come last in any competition, they get a prize. You know, it's always about yeah. how they're feeling. If they lose, they're not allowed to lose anymore. And I'm like, well, if exactly. they don't... If they don't... If you, well, there's yeah. a scene... I was going to say, Mike, there's a scene in Rocky, which I love, in the sixth movie, when Rocky finally has it out with his son. And he says to him, look, life is really tough. You know, and it's going to hit you and hit you and hit you. And it's not about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and get back up and keep moving forward. And I thought that was a really powerful scene. Uh, what do you think of that? Did, would you, is that your kind of philosophy? Yes, it is 100%. Only one thing is different. It's a small... It's just a small fundamental difference, and that is, once life hit me, I'm going to hit life back. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is a... I, I don't disagree with that. If people hit you, why should you take it? And that's always been, I know, your mantra. I'm just who I am. Mike, at various stages of your I'm life... I'm not malevolent, had... I'm just me. Right, and, and you've never... I've, I've known you a long time, and I find you one of the most fascinating people I know. You've had periods in your life where you've been unbelievably rich like half a billion dollars and so on. You've had other times when you've had no money. When have you been happiest? With, with a lot of money or actually is money irrelevant to your happiness? Well, I was happy both um, incident, but it was just a part of my growing stage. Mm. Um, I, um, I wasn't experienced with my money when I was younger. I'm more experienced now. When you, uh, I think it's 25 years since you bit Evander Holofield's ear. And I did read some. That long? Yeah, it's only 25 years, yeah. It's a long time, right? I agree. <laughs> Do you know what happened to, to that bit of his ear? But then in the fight, then you, um, it was able, obvious for you to see me spit it out, wasn't it? Yeah, I just wonder what happened to it. I don't know. Um, I think they picked it up and they put some, I don't know what it was, formaldehyde. <laughs> and I gave it to them in a commercial. <laughs> I read somewhere that you'd made $30 million from posing for pictures pretending to bite people. Listen, listen, I don't know if it was 30, but it was more than three that I got um, fined for. I've actually got a picture of you trying to bite me. It's on my loo wall. Hey, hey, listen, that's the new, um, that's the new gimmick picture. Every time kids, ladies, men, elderly men, elderly ladies, take a picture of my ear, take a picture of this, that. <laughs> and um, I'm happy to be able to do it. <laughs> well, you left my ear alone, I, I'm, I'm glad to say. Uh, Mike, you're, you're in that's great shape. because you didn't pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's completely true. Uh, well, one quick question before I let you go. <laughs> Donald Trump, uh, we, we think, may run again for president. You backed him last time. Would you back him again? Hey, listen. I'm going to do what I want to do when he runs for president, but it's going to be nobody else's business. Mm. You're not going to say either way? It's nobody's business what I say, but I'm going to say something. It, is, is getting your head above the parapet on politics more dangerous than getting in the ring? No, it's just ridiculous. It's like, if, if I don't like you, I'm going to make the whole country not like you. Mm. And I might send you to jail, too.
I mean, it is, it is ridiculous. <laughs> and what's also ridiculous, Mike, is, is that, that we can't have an opinion anymore, right? You're on a show now called Piers no. Morgan Uncensored. You can say what the hell you like, but you try and say some things out of this environment and people want to cancel you. It's like, a, what is this? Um, I don't know, is this fascist? If the government don't like you, the corporate world don't like you. Is that, is that called fascism? It's fascism, yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, that's what it is then. Because, listen, if certain people don't like you, oh, he's a bad guy. He, I'm not going to let him work for my company no more. And he gives you a bad name to all the corporations, and you can't make any money just because this one corporation don't like you. Mm. Absolutely right. It's, it's absurd the way society has gone. Mike, I could talk to you all night, but I've got to leave it there. Thank you very much for being with me and for being so... Mm -hmm. Completely on fire compared to last time. I'm just so glad that you didn't hey, fall listen, asleep in minutes. Please interview. forgive me. Please. <laughs> me and my wife was viewing it, and oh man, I was so, I was so ashamed. <laughs> Mike, you've more, you've more than made up for it this time. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you. <laughs> Take care, Pierre. All the best.